Elizabeth from Fern Creek Stickers, and I'm here today with a different kind of video. I'm going to start a series on how to use Adobe Illustrator to make stickers. For a long time, I was using Silhouette Studio, like I think a lot of people are, and Silhouette Studio actually has a few features that I think it does better than Illustrator, but the problem is it's really, really slow software, and there's a lot of stuff that is pretty cumbersome, and that software like Illustrator does a lot better. And I've switched all of my sticker designing over to Illustrator at this point, and there was definitely a bit of a learning curve. I'd been using Illustrator for some things for a long time, but there were a lot of new things I had to learn. But now that I'm totally switched over, I have no regrets, and I wanted to share some of the things that I do in Illustrator that are maybe a little more specific to making stickers and harder to find tutorials or information on. So this is a little bit different, may not appeal to all of my usual audience, but I think there are a lot of people out there that will find this helpful. I do want to say all of my illustrator knowledge is self-taught and there are probably different ways to do these things that I'm going to show you and maybe even easier ways. And if you have an easier way to do this, please let me know because I would be happy to learn from that. But hopefully this will be helpful to somebody else. So today what I'm going to show how to do is how to make stickers from clip art. So this would be like a deco sheet. So I'm going to put clip art in, we're going to make cut lines around it. And I want to show you how to use the image trace feature in illustrator for doing something like this. And especially how to um, make cut lines while maintaining your artwork. And I'll have a separate video coming up that's all about offset pads and creating cut lines. So there will be some things in here that I'll kind of gloss over that will be shown in that other video. So to start with, I have my artboard here that's the size that I want it to be. I've got a, a you know, a, my little header on there for my sticker sheet. I have two layers. So I have a print layer, which is where all of this is. And then I have a cut layer, which we'll be working with later. So the first thing to do is to bring in the artwork I want to use. And there's a few ways to do this. I think the easiest way, especially if you're bringing in multiple pieces of artwork at once, is to go file place. And then from here, I'm gonna find my artwork that I want to use. Let's see, I'm taking a second to think about where this was. I've got a lot of artwork in here. Okay, so I'm gonna use these. This was the March mystery kit. I'm gonna use these dinosaurs. So I'm gonna put them in. And so I selected all of them that I want. It's taking a second to think about it here. And then you just keep clicking until all of them are placed. Then I'm gonna zoom out here and select all of these and resize them down just so they fit. Um, one thing to notice is when I placed them, let me show you this really quick. I have the, um, the link button unchecked, so they're automatically embedded when they come in, and you can tell that there's not an X across them. If you have an X across your artwork, you'll probably want to come and make sure, come up to the, um, to the links panel and make sure that they're embedded, and you do that when, when it's selected, you come here and it would say embed instead of un unembed. And what that does is it means that if you move the files on your computer, if you open it on a different computer, the artwork is still going to be there. So unless you're really good at your file management and keeping things in the same place, I would recommend going ahead and embedding things. So then I'm going to arrange these dinosaurs how I want them to be. I'm not... Usually if I was making a deco sheet, I would spend a lot of time getting these arranged and making sure that I was filling up the page as much as possible. But for the sake of this, I don't need to spend a lot of time doing that. So we'll say that that looks pretty good. We've got a bunch of dinosaurs on there. So once you have this deco ready to go, you've got the stickers how you want, you are going to group them. And I used Command G to group them. You could also come over here to the quick actions and it would have said group instead of ungroup. There's a few ways to group it, but I like to use the keyboard shortcuts as much as possible. And then you're going to copy that. So we now have two sets and we're gonna bring one set up to the cut layer. Then you're gonna to want to drag them on top of each other and make sure that they are centered because you want one to be on top of the other. So if we come back to our layers, now you can see like if I turn off the cut layer, I've still got it there. If I turn off the print layer, I've got that there. So we've got one in the print layer and one in the cut layer. We're gonna be working with the one in the cut layer now to make cut lines. So we're gonna ungroup this now and we are going to go to the image trace window. And what we're gonna do is create a new preset for doing the image trace on this. And so what we wanna do is we're gonna to try to find the level at which we're tracing the whole object without tracing too much. Um, so 
I already have a preset here. I've got a deco and then deco too when I was playing around with preparing the video, but we're gonna create a new preset. So what you wanna do is you're gonna be, you want to have your view as tracing result, mode is black and white. You wanna check preview. And then you also want to drop down this advanced panel and check ignore white. So now we're gonna pull the threshold up. You see, if we pull it up all the way, we just get a, a black rectangle, which is not what we wanna do. Um, you can also see if we pull it down too, oops, failing to type there. If we pull it down too far, we're gonna lose part of the image. So there we don't have the, um, the dinosaur's teeth. And there actually you can see the teeth, but we're just seeing them from behind with the print layer. So the teeth have been lost in our image trace. So you wanna find the level where you are getting the whole image without making it a whole, uh, the, the whole black rectangle. So we've got it right here. So at this point, this is what we want. So we're gonna come save this as a new preset. I'll call this Deco 3 since I already have Decos 1 and 2. And now what you're going to do is come and apply that to the rest of your clip art. And this is one of those things that I have not found a way to do this on multiple pieces at once. If you select more than one, it won't let you do an image trace. So I just have to go through and do it one by one. It doesn't take very long to do, but if someone knows the secret to doing an image trace on multiple pieces of artwork at once, I would love to learn it. So now we want to select all of these and hit the expand button here. So now we have, again, we've gotten our two layers. So in our cut layer now we have these black dinosaurs and in the print layer um, we have the regular dinosaurs underneath them. You can see that. So now we're gonna select all of these and um, I'll, if I turn off the print layer here, the the fact um, if you turn off the print layer, then it's easy to select them all at once like that. You can also um, do select same fill color, and that will why that should do it. I'm not sure what's that's weird, but anyway, if we if we turn off the print layer, then it's easy to just select those all at the same time. Because now what we're going to do is create an offset path. So we go object path offset path and Oh shoot, I have this in points. Let me change that to inches so I can get the offset path that I like to have. So we go to object path, offset path, and 0 0.05 is what I like for um, artwork about this size. Hold on, why is this Velociraptor not included in my selection? Oh, I did not expand. There we go, that was my problem. So now I should be able to go to select same fill color and it'll select them all. I hadn't expanded the image trace to include that guy. So object path, offset path, I've done that a few times now, 0 0.05 is what we want. And now we don't wanna fill here. So we're gonna go to fill, no fill. And for the stroke, I want this magenta uh, because that is what my cutting machine recognizes as the cut line. And I like to make it 0.25 points. So now we have those cut lines and now I can ungroup all of these and select same fill color to delete those dinosaurs because I don't need those anymore. And if I go to layers and turn our print layer back on, you can see that now I have these cut lines. And obviously there is some editing that I need to do on the cut lines here. I need to get rid of that open space. I wanna close that up and get rid of that empty space there. So there are a few edits to make at this point. I'm not gonna show those in this video because I will have an upcoming video all about offset paths and creating cut lines in Illustrator. But one thing to see at this point is you can still move around and edit things. You just need to select the cut line and the image together. So like the stegosaurus is too close to the edge of the sheet. So I would wanna move that around. Oh, I need to, the ones in the print layer were still grouped. So I need to ungroup those first. So I can still, I can select the cut and the print lines together and I can move them around. So I can still fine tune and move at this point and I could even resize it other than the, um, the offset path won't be even on all of the artwork, but you can still resize the two together at this point. And then, <clears throat> 
Again, you can see if we come to the layers here, we've got our cut layer, we have our print layer. So those are ready to go to be able to, um, to be able to print and cut this sheet of dinosaur deco. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. Um, I do have several videos in mind to show in this series, but if there's something else you would like to know about designing stickers in Adobe Illustrator, please let me know in the comments and I would be happy to add it to my schedule. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that somebody out there found it helpful for making your own stickers in Adobe Illustrator, and I will see you all again soon. Bye, everyone.